from Fort William. Hello, I'm Karen McDonald. I too am originally from Fort William and now live in Inverness. So my mum initially got diagnosed in 2017, just after I graduated from high school. I remember her diagnosis coming as a huge shock to the whole family. My mum was really, really healthy. Um, she was still in her 40s and just the week before she'd gotten her diagnosis, she'd run a 10k. She was really into her running with Jog Scotland and she absolutely loved it. So when she got that diagnosis, she hadn't been too well for a while, but we didn't expect that. Um, she had a mastectomy, chemo and radiotherapy and she went through all of her treatments with a smile. She didn't moan or complain once. She used to say how lucky she was. Um, she was a very much class half full type person. She didn't like any fuss towards her. She just wanted to make sure that we were okay throughout the whole process of her being unwell. And she took that whole initial diagnosis and all the treatments totally in her stride and went into remission. So we had three years where we made the best memories. We went on a cruise around the Mediterranean. We just appreciate every day. Um, my mum was my best friend. We were extremely close alongside my two sisters, Leah and Mary, and my dad. Um, we're a really tight-knit family and we just really made the most of that time. After her initial diagnosis, I think it gave us all a bit of a wake-up call and made us even closer than before. Um, the world went into lockdown in March 2020 and I self-isolated with my fiancé's family. So I was only seeing my mum and dad for a doorstep visit throughout that period of time. And in May 2020, my mum became really ill really quickly and there were obviously the thoughts and the worries in the back of our minds that the cancer was back but we were kind of just hoping and praying that it was just something else that was making her fall so, so unwell so quickly. Um, I remember the first moment I realised how ill she was, which was when I went to go and visit them for a, a doorstep visit and she couldn't get up to the door to come and see me. So that was like alarm bells going off in my head that the, that the cancer was back and she went into, she got admitted to hospital the next day and she had some scans and they told us that her cancer was back in her bones, her liver and her lungs and she was given a prognosis of one to two years at best. So our worlds were just completely turned upside down. It was just the worst day of my life, like finding out that note of news. Um, so me and my two sisters moved back in with my mum and dad. It was the five of us living beneath the same roof for, for the first time in years. And we just really supported each other and came together as a family to get each other through that initial shock of the cancer coming back. Um, but again, my mum just did not feel sorry for herself at all. She was the most amazing, courageous person. She just like really felt that that's the cards that she could deal and she still said that she felt so much luckier than most people to have had the years and the family and the life that she had had for however long it was that she would have had that so she just felt lucky and blessed and, and grateful anyway which I think made it a lot easier for us as a family because she just made it seem so okay. Um, she went on until October 2022, so two years passed, we welcomed our her first grandchild into the world. My big sister had a baby and that was something that she really, really wanted to be here for, which she was. Um, she watched my big sister get married and we had so many beautiful, amazing moments throughout that, that period of time and my mum was so open in speaking about it and speaking about the future and all of her hopes and dreams for each of us. Um, in October 2022, she really went downhill. She became really unwell again, really quickly. And we were all at the house my sisters, and my dad, and my auntie John and Karen we were all with her in the house. And we knew it was time to move her to the hospice. We were told that she maybe had about 24 hours left to live when we were still in the house with her. 
and her main wish towards the end was that she really, really wanted to come to the Highland Hospice. In 2010, my mum had lost her sister, Nelly, to ovarian cancer after a really short six-week battle. She um, came to the hospice and she spent about a week here. And my mum experienced firsthand the love and care that exists in this hospice. It's so special and everyone is just so supportive and not even just to the patient but to the families as well and from my mum seeing that she decided that when her time came that she also wanted to to pass at the hospice so when we were in the house and got told that she only had 24 hours left we knew that it was kind of a race against time to get it up to Inverness to come to the hospice so we all drove up and I think three cars came just bundled into the hospice and we ended up staying here for 19 days. Um, we took it in turns to sleep in the family room. We slept in amongst my mum in the cuddle beds, which was also so special to be able to lay beside her. And we would watch our reality TV show, which she loved Made in Chelsea. So we'd be sitting watching Made in Chelsea and drinking Prosecco. And we had, especially after being told that we'd only had that day or so, ending up having the 19 days here was so special and I don't think it would have been nearly as special if we hadn't been here in the hospice and the kind of environment and the love that is in this building. I don't think that it would have been as such a special end to my mum's life. Um, all of the staff were so supportive and so comforting and consoling. They would come in, they were really upset, they would come give you a wee cuddle and just like they couldn't at the hospice you just cannot do enough to make your, your time here special for the family and for the patient. Um, <coughs> so we stayed for 19 days and my mum passed on the 3rd of November, a week before her 50th birthday. I mean we couldn't get an ambulance to take Christina to the oh, hospice gosh. in Bologna. we just couldn't. But then they advised us not to move Christina. The journey would probably kill her. Yeah. But well, Christina to, wanted she to wanted. be in the Highland Hospice. So my brother drove her yeah. in the dark with all of us. Like a convoy. A convoy. But when we turned the corner. Had, Mary had all like a playlist of all my mum's favourite songs. Mary like the nurse was oh. in the back of the car just in case she needed anything. That's she had so all lovely. the songs on. But as soon as we turned the corner, everyone was outside. Everyone was outside the Highland Hospice waiting for us, yes. taking us straight in. Then we were all sorting us out, putting us into the room, giving us everything. It was, it was amazing. It was just something else. And Christina knew, remember she told Gary, when they were coming along the waterfront, she told them exactly where the hospice was. My dad kept getting lost. He didn't. And she sure had been, she, was she going. Had fallen like, completely unconscious yes. throughout maybe... The day before we had to come to the hospice, my mum was completely unconscious. She was unconscious throughout the whole car journey. And then we pulled onto the street and she, and she just woke up and said, it's around the corner again. And as soon as they came in, they were on the outside with everything there, ready just to take her out because the car was made into like a bed. But they didn't think we'd get here. Nobody thought we would get here with her in one piece and we did. And we had great times in here, we had a tipsy tea party, loads of photos. Um, Christina's mum and dad were still in Fort William, so we were trying to send Granny Teapot and Charlie pictures and everything of Christina. And it was lovely. Mm -hmm. We did, we had some amazing times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think from my mum being unconscious and being told that we had such a limited time, I think, when I think it was maybe day three of us being here, she fully woke up. She yeah. just sat up and she was like ready Watch. to chat. <laughs> and we had such beautiful conversations about all of our memories together and her her favourite memories, although she said she couldn't possibly choose a favourite memory because they're all her favourite memories. Um, and just I think for me and my two sisters and my dad getting that closure almost of her being able to wake up and have these conversations with us here. It was so special, just really special memories here. Don't know if you want to say about the Prosecco story, that's funny. Yeah. Just about, just start and say she... Christina she's... never really was a drink had ever, maybe once a year, and it was red wine was her tipple, that's what she did. 
but on arrival at the our hospice, for some reason, Christina took to drinking Prosecco daily. I had to tell the nurses this was not an ongoing thing, this was new to Christina, because it was, every time she woke up, have you got me a glass of Prosecco? <laughs> Or she would hear us. She would hear us all Me and my it. sisters love Prosecco. We would be trying to like discreetly open the box. She used to always whinge at us for drinking too much Prosecco. She would be like, you are just too far. And then we would be like quietly trying to open the bottle. She'd be like, I'll have a glass then. All the time, every day. And I thought the nurses are going to think we've seen her drinks from 10 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. When in fact she never drinks, ever. Mm -hmm. And if we did, we got help for doing it. Mm -hmm. But no, can't thank Highland Hospice enough. As I say, we're no strangers to the hospice. This is the second time within the family that we've had to come here and just amazing, amazing. They're everybody. Mm -hmm. And we had Archie, which lightened everything. Mm -hmm. And Bella, and Bella. And we got the dog, dog. <laughs> we the dog in. Oh, we were allowed yeah. the dog in, which made a massive difference because the dog was bought for Christina for company. Christina loved her yeah, dog. Yeah. So the dog was allowed in, so I mean, there's probably more of us in the room than what's allowed, but it was amazing. Just, mm -hmm. it was great. Mm -hmm. Christina got a great send off. Yeah. Great send off. Mm -hmm. And she's up there looking down, laughing at us too. <laughs> and Moa. She will be laughing at us when she's in the catwalk. Like, <laughs> on, she'll just look honestly. That's what she used to say. <laughs> Amazing. So, and, and so did they, her dog live with her, sleep with her in the bed yes. and things, yeah? Yeah, Amazing. the dog is really well trained, she's really well yeah. trained though. No, she was in all the time, we took turns walking it. Yes. You know, it got you out, Emma, for yep. a wee walk and back in again. We were very lucky, we got a river facing room, mm -hmm. so you could open the doors yes. up, you know, let the sunshine into Christina, and as I say, when we did take her out, we got her out in the bed, through the doors, you know, in the sunshine, and it was lovely. We made wee videos and photos, we had our food, and it was just like a wee tea party for us, and it was lovely. It was lovely. Really lovely. Amazing. That's what it's all about, yeah. I'm so glad that we were able to look after your mum, and you've got all that special memories as well. Well, this is why we have to raise money, so that everybody, everybody, you know, if they need it, it's there, and it's funded, and it's stays at the level that it's at because it's an amazing place. I can't recommend it highly enough. And everybody, I mean, you just say the words Highland Hospice and everybody says fantastic. You know, it's a great place. After experiencing the love and care that my mum received here, I kind of made like a vow to myself that throughout the rest of my life, I would always try and find ways to give back in some way, shape or form to the hospice. Like, they've given so much to us as a family and I think it will be a lifelong goal of mine to try and give that back to other families who need it. Amazing. I'm walking the catwalk. I'm walking the catwalk as ordered by Mrs. McCritchley, <laughs> Anson. And I'm doing it for Nelly and Christina and for all the people out there because nobody knows when this is coming knocking at their door and I'm doing it for everybody. And it is, as Melanie said, it's a lifetime thing. You know, it's just something you always do. You have to make a point every year of doing something to give back to the hospice. We've given so much to us.